Yo, 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 yo. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody. How are you doing? In these crazy times, huh? You know the sound? That's right. It's my protection gloves, man. Can't, can't do shit without your protection gloves. Very nice. Are you ready? Are you ready to rock and roll with some playing cards? So let's do this. No, but I can't do it because I can't play the intro. I forgot the intro. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Here we go, kiddos. What's up, everybody? What's up? We're live on air again here on Marius Magic. <laughs> Are you good? Are you safe and sound? Are you healthy? And most importantly, the folks you care about? I hope so, everybody. Let me know your stats in the comments to get it out of the system. And then we hit it hard with this sucker. That's right. Before we get started, we're going to play the freaking intro. Here we go. On Mario's magic. I can subscribe. So let me take this off here first. Because, of course, it's silly. I'm alone in my room. I don't need that stuff. And I, when I'm, when I'm uh, walking outdoors, I'm also not wearing gloves or a mask. But I wear a mask when I work because I'm a social worker. And that's what, what's just reasonable to protect the clients. So... I'm system relevant worker. I'm still working. But still, we are impacted with the whole thing, like everybody. But the business I'm running with my girlfriend, we just lost our, our stream, our revenue stream. You know, all the markets are closed for good and we are not expecting them to open. What the hell? Oh my God. <laughs> Anytime soon. So, what are you gonna do? We are going to, to pimp our ride, our website, hopefully, you know, to get some sales online. And that's a lot of work. We wanted to do it anyway. Now it's the time, right? And also, I got a little time here for some extra candy for you guys. Card magic wise, of course. So let me see who's there. And then um, we're gonna talk about it. Oh, it's going to be a great session. We're going to talk about in-depth expert card technique, expert card handling, expert card manipulation, sophisticated card slides, expert at the card table by jean Hugard and Frédéric Bruy, the pass. So we got in the house, Herr Logi, we got Colin Goskamp, uh, we got um, Four Suited Kings, Sebastian Hense, and Peter Luzuzgorski. Welcome, guys. Awesome. How is everyone today? Four Suited Kings asked. Pretty good, thanks. Says Colin Grosskamp. Good to hear. Stay safe. Everybody's safe with Colin Grosskamp. That's great to hear. Amazing. Hey, Bastian. Sebastian is checking in to say hi. Guys, I hope you're safe. I hope you are sound. And I hope uh, you don't mind me jazzing a little bit here with the whole topic because everything's really serious it's a dramatic situation i know uh for everybody you know there's a lot of fear in the house a lot of uh, panic and 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 um you know worries we're not gonna focus on all of that we try to forget this we try to focus on cards today a hundred percent and we're going to talk about the pass in depth the classic pass the invisible turnover pass um 
an advanced version of the pass, the bro Bray pass. We're going to talk about the pass in different performance situations, uh, the pass in general, and all, of course, on the basis of, of what we already established um, for ourselves and also what is there already here on this channel. You will find a lot of relevant links up in the info cards as well as in the info box. It's a whole tutorial series on the pass, um, the basic technique, the basic uh, mechanics, and then how to embed it into um, performance situations, how to catch the break for the pass, and then how to um, give it a little bit of cover and uh, with the motion of squaring up the cards. And also there's a tutorial on the dribble pass. You will also find a in-depth tutorial on the invisible turnover pass in the info cards as well as in the info box. Likewise, the whole series uh, we are um, going through this year, expert card technique, and also of course, uh, Royal Road to Card Magic, everything is there. So um, when you watch this later or you rewatch re it, whatever, you will find all the candy you need right there. Now, first of all, big shout out, big, big thank you to them odd maniacs who support me via patreon guys you rockin awesome and check this out we already uh, got our um our first goal here right here is the first goal let me see if i can zoom this in where is it wait 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 here i was uh, i was saying um when we reach 48 rocks a month I will do a super special exclusive live session with all of my patrons here on Patreon. Let's uh, try to make this hyper interactive like Google Hangout or something. And I guess we're going to do this on uh, Discord when the time has come. We are super close right now with uh, 41 rocks. Um, guys, thank you so much. This is super exciting. So we're going to do a, um, um, a live session with video over discord whoever you know gets the tech going and wants to join the party and um and this is going to be the first time where we're going to do this it's going to be super amazing i'm super excited about it so we are we're stepping further here um growing together also on uh on the patreon side but even more so on our discord server guys in preparation probably for this video you started posting videos of yourselves practicing the pass and i really really appreciate it i will talk about this i will um use a little bit the um examples you gave me here to uh, to pinpoint what is most relevant what is most important what you really gotta get down you gotta get it in your head and in your chest and in your stomach and in your feet right when we talk about the past um, it is super important there is something very 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 super important about it um which is true for all kinds of techniques which is true for pretty much the whole art form and if you get this right from scratch it will make a huge huge difference um i don't know um i will maybe um uh, say the same thing all over again um or repeat myself, uh, but trying to, you know, get there from different angles to make this as rich as possible for everybody, no matter what skill level you're on. I'm super excited about it. And I, I actually don't even know how to start uh, because uh, it's so, there is so much uh, I want to share with you today, guys. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. So, so much for the introduction. Here I'm doing this again. I'm so sorry. I gotta do this. Right, here we are. I need to turn the music down on my headphones. And I'm gonna turn the music a little bit more down for you guys. Of course, once again, we are listening to uh, royalty free music um, put together by the Royalty Free Planet. That's a YouTube channel here. And um, I support um, royalty free stuff. Um, with the Brave browser, with the um, automized, automized tipping and um, reward system of Brave. It's an amazing web browser and you can uh, uh, support me by giving this browser 30 days a try. You find down in the info box, you find the, um, the affiliated link. Um, this browser, mm, I love it. 
you see me only using this browser. I'm using this for over a year now, just that you know. And um, royalty free music, it's so important for us content creators here on YouTube. Just amazing. Love this music, gives me good vibes. So, um, what are you guys saying in the comments? What does a social worker do? Uh, Peter uh, Lizogorski asks, I am um, an assistant of people with disability. Um, with um, mainly one client I've been working with for for over a decade, decade now. Do you say de decade? Right. Um, glad uh, to be supporting even a little bit. Hello, he's saying. Uh, from across the pond, nice analytical work with the explanation tutorials. Govman105, thank you so much. Uh, it's your first time tuning in here to the live sessions. That's amazing. You're very welcome to the show. Um, then we got Igor, I believe, uh, tuning in again. Hey, Igor, what's up? How are you doing? Um, Thank you, Admarius. Really helps the input from you and uh, the team. Hello, Logi. Thank you so much uh, for for the feedback, Hello, Logi, and also for your um, you know um, engagement. This is really amazing. Um, it also really helps me a lot you know, to organize my stuff and to see uh, to see where you are. Actually, we talk about this in a, in a second. Um, absolutely, Colin Groscom says, absolutely, really love the community we have going. Yes, it's really nice. Now, by the way, guys, I just, I'm, I'm just not managing um, to catch up with all the uh, discussions you got going on, but I don't think I, I need to really. You guys are um, um, doing a great job. You're super, uh, super um, supportive, um, helpful, respectful, um, which uh, which is amazing. And um, I, uh, I love it like this. So you guys go, do your thing in Discord, and I'm going to, you know, um, uh, um, uh, co contribute uh, to your discussions wherever I can or, or whatever. But you know, you can um, ask me anytime, anything, and when I have the time, I will, I will get back to you. Right uh, now, Trinity is also in the house. Trinity man, what's up? That's really amazing. Um, uh, I, I'm excited. So, anyways, let's see how we're doing. Uh, we got uh, currently 13 folks watching. Fair enough. Let's get started now. When we compare the chapter of the past uh, uh, in this book here, Expert Card Technique, um, to the Royal Road to Card Magic, which has been published, um, I believe, about 10 or 12 years later by the same authors, we will find um, there's the, the, a change that has happened. Here an Expert Card Technique, who got in Brouet, they are addressing an, a different uh, uh, an audience, a different audience. They are not addressing um, novices, uh, beginners um, who uh, want to get started with the art form, who want to get into card magic. They are addressing um, already um, advanced working professional magicians. It's, it's, it's getting really clear in this chapter. They are not um, introducing the past in any way, really. They are not um, explaining where it comes from, what it is, what it does. They don't explain the basic techniques. They just go right into it and um, they are pretty much in every sentence um, describing extremely detailed, extreme subtle um, motions, if you, if you want so. So this is for people who actually already know a great deal of handling cards um, and to grasp an idea of what the colleagues have been doing, maybe to improve what they are doing. And the great thing about this here is that you can see basically, um, you can see basically the evolution of um, sleight of hand right there in this chapter, because the Brouet Pass, uh, which is right there in the center of the chapter, which is basically a um, a super subtle, um, super specialized, micro changed version of the classical pass, stands next to the um, invisible turnover pass. And I'm telling you, when I read the chapter about the uh, uh, the invisible turnover pass, I was writing no, no, no next to it because the handling in this book, when it comes to the invisible turnover pass, can you see this? No, 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 don't do it like this. <laughs> that's 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 where I'm at, you know? I'm, I'm reading those books and I'm going, no, no, you, no. <laughs> Let's see. Let, let's see how smart I am. Let's see how smart I am. But basically, you have 
a version here of the inv invisible turnover pass, which has been already improved, which has been, uh, has improved a lot in my hands since I'm doing the invisible turnover pass. And it's pretty much the same thing what happened in Broé's hand um, with the with the classic pass. So the evolution of sleight of hand right there here in one chapter, you know, side by side. That is that that just blew my mind. I thought that was really, really amazing. Before we get started though, and I'm going to do this in every session here, I just gonna read the same paragraph all over again. It is part one slides because you just need to, you can't, you just need to, that's need, you need to have it there. At the late date, it should not be necessary to emphasize the fact that slides should never be used except as a secret process in the course of a trick. To demonstrate one's ability in making the pass or changing a card, for instance, is simply to destroy the mystery of such tricks in which these slides are used later on. So, when we go when we, when we zoom in here on specific slides, we don't do this to show off. We don't do this to take these slides as our final destiny. Those are just tools which later will be embedded. And we just will bring our attention to those techniques just for the time needed to get them at our fingertips. Same is true when you guys upload videos where you show your pass or whatever technique it is, double lifts, double turnovers, steals, whatever. We're only doing this to improve our abilities, to improve our skills, to get a little feedback from someone who might be able to help you. And that's it. We're not going to be the guys who are going to show off with whatever slide and, and and leave it there that's not our objective it it's that boring and it's an incredible waste of freaking time i leave that to whoever wants to waste their time like that i'm not going to do that so we are going to take out of this only what we need only what is important everything else we leave aside right very very important now, one more thing about the subtleties here. I've seen your passes on our Discord. And most of you, or most of what I saw, you guys are still pretty much at the beginning of the, of the learning process. Now the pass, and by the way, that is already, you've already come far, but that's just half the way to master the pass and by mastering the pass i mean to be able to pull it off with the snap of a finger that's it and it's not about making this sucker in any way invisible or bringing it to hyper speed in order to you know have your hands burning while you do it the pass and i've said it all over and over again is something which is meant to be done in an offbeat that means when your onlookers are not looking at your hands so within the snap of a finger let me show you let me show you the pass you will need if you perform the pass for an audience a lot of people are not going to like it because they waste a lot of time. They are almost much better than this or much faster than this, but it's not about speed here. We're going to learn this. It's really not about speed. That's the pass you need, right? That's the pass you need. That's all you need. You see that? That's about the snap of a finger. Snap of a finger. Please write this on your forehead. It's not about speed. It's about ease of execution. The sucker needs to be just super light. That's it. So what you guys have been doing, you are in this phase kind of, I expose this here a little bit. You're, you're like, like this, that's what you're doing, right? And if you perform it like this, and I've seen some of you doing it exactly like this, you're already really good, yeah? Really good. So first tip I wanna give you guys, do not be so stressed about to keeping the, 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 the hands super together because 
you don't hide anything. It really doesn't matter. You're just taking the lower portion with the tips of your between the tips of your second finger and the thumb like this very lightly, you know. Have a light grip here and then just open your hand in the manner I explain in the tutorial. And then you just bring your other fingers here in there and then just repeat the motion all over again. And you do this for hours, for days, for weeks because you need to build this muscle memory and it's super freaking annoying. It's a pain in the ass. There's nothing about it. But you will get better, you will get better and you will get better and you will f you will experience this, this package here it becomes lighter and lighter, right? And you can do this faster and faster. And now here is where a lot of people turn into the wrong direction. Now they go for, for speeding this really up, like fast, I need to get it fast. And they get into a spastic, like some, like, and they make a stupid face when they do it. <coughs> and they go faster and faster instead of losing it up. Um, that's why I put the dribble pass in the tutorial series, because what you want, you want to get into, into a, into a flow of motions where the package just you where you just need to pull the package vertical until it clears now you know and, and until it clears where's the angle until it clears and then you want to have it fall just fall drop back so that's why i put the dribble pass in the tutorial series well this just helps you know to just get into the groove of letting, letting the package fall into the hand so, one more time, it's really important for you guys that you understand this. You will not experience a lightness and an ease and a smooth flow of motions for a long time. It's really like this, nah, oh, and then, mm, and, and yeah, and you just keep on doing this. And there comes a point where this thing becomes easier. Of course, you need to speed it up a little bit, but not too much, right? And try to keep your index finger throughout the whole process on curled inwards here. You will see, we will see here in a second why this is so freaking important, right? So everybody who's just, you know, having the fingers st sticking outwards and doing something like this, it's that you have to you have to change this then, right? Later on. So bring this in here. It is in the beginning annoying, especially if you have, you know, already conditioned yourself to do it like this. But it's really important. You want to have this finger like in this position because it already in this grip here when we have to deck the top portion horizon horizontal to the floor, when we pull it out, it the, 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 you, you perfectly see it, the index finger here. It's like a little bumper, bang, it snaps it back. The, the portion really snaps back and that's what you want. But you don't want to, you know, overdo it. You don't want to bring power in there. You just want to give it a slight tap so that it just... And then you let gravity do the rest. That is the key. You want to to have gravity, to get gravity involved. You know, gravity, this is an Aaron Fisher quote. Gravity is your friend, but it can also kill you. <laughs> so, we're here. We pull it off and we just let it drop, drop back. In this grip, we already have, or we already can, keep our pinky under the package, right? Look, I got my pinky in here. And by the way, if you are a beginner right now and this is a little too much for you, don't you panic, don't you worry. Chill out, take a deck of cards out, practice your thing, whatever you practice, just suck it in, suck it in. And then you go to the tutorial series, links in the info box, info cards as well as in the info box. You work your way up to this point here and you watch it again and you're going to be good, right? So, um, and I'm not um, I'm reading your comments right now, so I don't, I, I don't want to lose my train of thought here. So don't you worry, right? I hope you're good. I hope you're listening. I hope um, you're excited and I hope this is helping you out. Currently, we got 18 folks watching. Everybody is welcome. So glad you're all tuning in. So, by the way, little tip, pra when you practice this, I've seen you all lift up here to get the pinky in there, right? Try to do this a little differently. Try to get the gap by tilting your, your left wrist downwards because um, this uh, this is something you can use. It looks so much better, right? This motion is so much less suspicious than this motion. So pr just practice this to just tilt your lower wrist in and put the pinky in there, right? So pinky is uh, sticking there, right there. Mm -hmm. 
No, where was I now? I pulled the cards out. Right, the uh, the pinky is in there, and for the dribble pass, I of course open the hand to have the cards fall into a um, straddle grip, open loose straddle grip. But of course, I can perform it also in a manner where I keep the the pinky curled inwards underneath the package. Funny enough, this happened to me once, and I realized this is. Uh, this uh, gives me a lot of control over the package, actually, and this made me realize that there, that that the pink, the, the role, the role of the pinky, that the pinky is kind of going with the with the deck throughout the whole motion, and um, I did not notice before, and I was really um, um, excited about the fact that uh, Bruy uh, kind of um, made the same observation, and also pointed it out to be so freaking important here. Now, the Bruy Pass. Where are we? I'm with false deals here. The Bruy Pass. We are here. The Bruy Pass. We are page 43. Listen to this. The survival of the method of making the classic pass through the centuries proves that the basic principles are correct and the best yet evolved. This has not changed. For a stand-up situation, the, sh the pass, the classic pass, is basically the move. If you perform it accordingly to its design, with this little bit of misdirection, which usually comes um, naturally, if you place the pass in the right build of the routine, you don't even have to worry, you know. But of course, the past has evolved over the over the years, especially in a time where cameras are everywhere and a new generation of uh, magicians, them youngsters, them YouTube YouTube kids, um, you know. Um, who are used to record everything with the camera like this. I have a steady shot right here and I can adapt everything I do to this shop, shot. And we're going to talk about this here because I had a little breakthrough with my own, with my own um, learning uh, process here. And I'm going to share this with you guys. Anyways, the past has become more, much more defined than this classic um, version we, we were reading about in the Royal Road to Card Magic. And it's all about making the thing super light, giving it a super light touch. Listen, the following method uses these principles but applies them in a slightly different way with the result that the two packets are transposed with less movement and therefore more rapidly. The direction should be followed with the pack in the hand. So this evolution of the of the basic technique already happened here right you know we're talking the 40s or like let's say from the 20s to the 40s of the freaking last century how crazy is this how amazing is this that um i just find myself um just right in there because this is what naturally happens in your hands and basically this is what i want to say this is how i want to encourage this frustrating time of practice that, that you all got to go through this will happen in your hands if you just follow do, do, do these right steps so we are want to bring in less movement we want to take the movement out of there and we want to make it light as possible which then has as a result the speed so we don't bring it in speed by, you know, making this rapid motion here faster and faster and faster. We bring it to speed by less motion. What? And then we get into this very, very subtle explanation here. Now, pass, check this out. Check it out. What they say, or what, what what's written here is that... The second and third fingers are playing not the major role here anymore in um, pulling the package out. The 
index comes in play and the top portion is now mainly clipped between index and pinky. Now, holding the, bro the right grip, which hasn't changed with the thumb running parallel here and securing the cards parallel at the outer left long side. When you press downwards with your second finger, or is it the third finger? I think they say the second finger, but, you, but I would do it with my third finger. I press downwards. What's happening is that the package very slightly tilts upwards and um, into the diagonal, right? Let me see if I can just recover this, like this. This is this tiny motion I'm talking about, this motion here. And this happens because of this weird um, contradiction here. So the pinky goes up and the third finger with eight of the second finger, they snap down. So we have this motion with the cards clipped. And of course, when the cards are clipped in this motion, they make this move, right? That's just naturally. Now, this is just used to loosen the cards a little bit. We still hope to, to hold the grip here to loosen the top package here a little bit. So with no effort and ease at all, we get into this position. Look at this. Now I'm hiding the portion here. And if we now proceed with the pass and we have our index here at the tip and we just proceed the pass, you will have the snapping motion just even more more intense. Snap! It goes back. Now, I have discovered this myself. However, I would do it the other way around. So I would have the, the top portion fall to the, the, to the index here, which works really nice as well. And for the dribble pass, this is just perfect. Because the cards, because because of the larger motion, you, do, you don't care about this, the, the top edge going instead of the lower edge going. You see this? We're getting immediately cover here when we, when we get with the lower edge out instead of the other way around. However, if I put this in this large motion, also with a little tilt of my wrists upwards, which, which it would, you know, it's just all a part of the, of the dribble and I'm exaggerating here everything, I get into this result. Even with the camera burning, even with you knowing the, the illusion works. Now, and I did not realize, I don't know why I never, never figured this out myself. If you do it like this, you can get into this position. And if you give it a little, you know, angle, where I'm basically ready for the, for the pass and I could figure it out to make it invisible for a specific camera angle. Once again, it is not about, and you know, there is this temptation to make this, you know, perfect and stuff, but it's not about it. It's really important. Anyways, and then once again, if you execute it right, you don't need any, any kind of, you know, haste or pay high pace. So, I try just now to to make this and to get this smooth very slowly and not to flash here. I need to bring the book away because I need a little tilt downwards with my with my with my wrist. So I'm in this position, and I don't care now about how I get there. I'm just here. So I just come here, just a little bit, and I just come here. You see a little flash here. Let me see if I can get this away. Where am I? There. Yes, yes. This is uh, this is what Mary is just figuring out how to how to get the yeah the pass invisible. Ha! Did you see the index? Not a problem in a live performance. So. Looking for the angle. Now, I have been just now giving you an example, a, neg a negative example of what you only do 
if you really know why you do it. So this would be me now saying for a specific trick that I would record only for the recording situation. And I, there is no other way I could naturally get what I want, the position I want. And I need this freaking pass. I would sit down, I would design the whole routine. And I don't mean the whole trick. I'm, I'm, I, I just mean this section of the routine to create a flow of motions that gets me in the right angle for performing the pass. And I would try to create it in a manner that every movement I make has reason, is reasonable. I'm reaching for something, I need to wipe the, the that's what you see people, do, uh, magicians do very often, you know, clean the table plate, this this move here, like this, I, I love this, Wait, where's the camera? This one here. I love this. It's so, fu it's so freaking funny. But that is just for the camera. And you need to know that the slides we are confronted in in this book, these are all designs by master magicians, by people who performed years after years after years. They have their routines. They had their setups. They knew where they were performing. And they also knew uh, had a lot of experience what it means to improvise in a completely thrown in situation, completely jazzing. These are people who performed in the 1880s, 1890s, uh, you know, 1900, 1905, 1907, no freaking television big magic, no internet, no nothing. You are with real characters in a pub, you know? <laughs> And if you might have been uh, in the States, there have been even guns involved, like a different time, you know? Oh, wait, there's still guns involved in the States, right? Anyways, doesn't matter. It's not the point of it. So they have, so when we say here Brue Pass or something, it's a guy who figured it out for himself and he had a reason for it. Doesn't mean that this is relevant for us or to us it's just here i'm just pointing this out that what's freaking important for you is to know that you will go through this process of you know pulling the pack out there to give it the snap you want to have it to give it the snap and as soon as you get it there f release the dragon you know go just have the package you know like this open the hand let the package drop you want to get this feel open it up loosen you know get get loose with it and then you will get into and you will get the control over the package so that you that you can you know bring things a little closer back close together and then you will be able to do this now nah, this didn't really work bam it's just this little flash here and now if you now think oh you are flashing that's that you can't do it no 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 it is absolutely invisible if you put it in the right place right because all you need like this and here comes the kicker if we now look at the at the um, the jog pass let's talk about the jog pass here we don't we, we don't perform a pass in the classic sense here at all or we perform the class truly in the classic sense that we are just freaking shifting two packages Right, and it freaking doesn't matter how we do it. You know, we can do it like this. We just take the we take the packages, we stay hit in against our head if we need to, and we, we and then we shift them. As as long as nobody sees it, you have successfully performed the pass. So the jog pass. Oh wait, let me let me read your comments first here. What what's up with you guys? Cheer up needs a beer. It's uh, it's exciting, right? Wit von Wit is in the house late again. Hey Wit von Wit man, it's great you're tuning in. So uh, Dallas Taylor just once caught uh, Tommy Wonder uh, doing the classic pass on one of his videos. Uh, so minimal. Cracked a joke to the audience and in, in the act of uh, putting the deck on the table, he pulled off the pass right in front of their eyes. Chi Rupp needs to go. Um, see you later. Have fun rewatching. 
dude, take care. Um, that, Dallas Taylor, that's a nice example. Yes, I'm always, I'm always saying this. There are videos out there from old farts, you know, who, who are working the tables, who are working the bars for decades and uh, they know how to entertain audience. And then for one reason, because we live in this world right now, a drone flies by and shoots the whole thing and then somebody up uploads it and then uh, you get all these comments from all those uh, uh, wannabes. Ah, this guy doesn't know how to perform the pass. He sucks and stuff. No, no, uh, of course. If you if you um, record it from a certain angle, and if you it's just you know don't follow the misdirection, if you rewatch and rewatch, if you are looking for for it, you will find it, you know. And at this point, it doesn't also matter if the performer flashes or not. So that's just the point. This is just you know the the, the background. Uh, if you don't know how to use a slide, uh, knowing how to do it or respectfully having the skill is kind of worthless. So now let's, let's talk about the jog pass. And what I like about this is here that we are working. Now, I don't, I don't know the jog pass by heart. And also this is something which is hardly working with a, ca with a fixed camera. So again, we are in interaction with, your, with our audience. Wait, where's the music? I'm so sorry. I need to listen to music. Okay, yes. By the way, this is the um, tutorial for the uh, for the invisible turnover pass, also known as the Hermann pass. We're going to talk about this in a second, and I'm going to uh, tell you um, the, the classic version here in the book, basically, and then the improvements that I've made, which are basically uh, ve which are very close to what Bruy discovered. Bruy and everybody who mu ever mastered the pass, pass, you know. So let's not call it the Bruy pass. Let's be that cocky, right? Because just because you made a little, you know, change of the movement of the second finger, you, I don't think you should call this your, you, you could name this after yourself. <laughs> so let's call it the feather part or the, the um, fingertip tipper or whatever, you know, be creative. Don't, 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 uh, don't think you achieved something because you made something happen uh, in your in your hands. Uh, <laughs> what's out there for 580 years or something, <laughs> uh, dude? Really, this is something. Okay, now I'm losing. That's a little break here. This is something. You know, I know, I know. We live in a we live in a society. We all gotta we all gotta make our money. We we all gotta you know earn our cash. You know, cash gotta come in to feed our sheep <laughs> but you know I just bought my, myself the other day a flap card <laughs> I knew it was one I just wanted to see the, the specifics of this, this one <laughs> and it's just like and I was you know like maybe this one works it's just the same thing you know you throw it you see it it sounds like somebody slap in your face <laughs> I will do a little trailer with it, but then I need a big fog machine, you know, I need the guy with the fog machine in the back and then I throw my snap card and it changes visibly color in front of my face and that shit's is crisp and great for a trailer, but you, it's not, it's not real. It doesn't work in the real world, you know, anyways, anyways, so there you got all these people selling the latest version of slide xyz7 and it's it's just out there right for centuries it's right here but that's business because brain who got did just the same thing <laughs> 80 or something years ago that's just how things work i i guess just know it takes time to evolve in your hands and you need to you know walk the you need to walk the mile you need to walk the road the the path to get there you just can't you know buy a download or a dvd and then you know expect accept it to be there so the classic pass to the fingertip light version and by the time you're there you will read this chapter here 
with ease. You will go like, ah, interesting. I give it a try, and you will take you five minutes then to um uh to make a decision whether you want to work it or not. All right, all right. How how long are we doing this right now? Forty two minutes. Forty two minutes. So we, we try to um try to uh to. to uh, not to do it too long. So okay, so so not the the, the jog pass. Let's go to the to the flash grip pass. There's one thing I just want to say about it: the flash grip pass. So we are getting this mo move here. Look at this move here. We are getting into this grip where let's see where the flash of the <laughs> it's right there. The flash of the first joint of the uh, 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 pinky sticks in there. So, and we get into this weird grip, which they say it's natural. It's just the same thing. And I have never seen anybody holding the deck like this. So that we don't have hold a finger break. And this is magicians, you know, trying to fool magicians. Don't waste any more time with it. However, there might be very few specific use case scenarios where this might be appropriate or useful but if you if you want to get, get into this position just because you don't want to have the, the the pinky in there just because you don't want other magicians knowing that you might pull off a pass then you're wasting your time but the funny thing about it is here i'm not going to the details I just follow this along it's basically just the same thing when we lose the packages here we are just working here with gravity again and we're working with the same motion and we already need uh, and we also need the um, index to get the, the deck snapping so it is a different manner here to get to get the, the packages actually separated and then you you do the same motion yeah so i i wouldn't wouldn't bother right now wasting any time in there you know because i'm not out there to perform magic for magicians you know i i, I don't i don't oh if you know I, I, I to fool magicians other magicians you know too i don't i don't see the value in it you know i love being fooled by other magicians but you know i don't see that you know it's just he might have pulled off a pass or the, the false shuffle or whatever i don't know the specific in the technique uh, specifically or the fine details of the routine the the, the, la the last outlines or drawings it's it's not my work anyway and i'm just pleased to 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 experience the um the sensation and the wonder uh, once again because you easily forget this right um, and then this becomes an inspiration and not something that I need to compete with. You know, I hate this weird um, competitive thinking amongst magicians. It's uh, borderline retarded, in my opinion. But anyways, uh, um, I'm not reading your comments because uh, here I will go through them later. Now let's talk about uh, um, the... The Singon Perfect Table Pass, because that's just something I just wanted to talk about for a brief moment here. The pass is a stand-up move because you um, you you can do it at the table, but it's really uncomfortable, and uh, you need to go back and stuff. And um, to 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 work a really clean pass at the table, um, you wouldn't go for the classic version. There is an adaptation um, or a variation of the invisible turnover pass. I'm going to show you this in a second, which works very really well. And if you get this, uh, got to practice this a little bit to get this flowing. But if you got it flowing, um, you can work the table with this. But this one is also very nice. So basically, we get into an out jog at the inner side of the package. Um, where am I? So we get an in-jog, I'm sorry, and we catch a break. Um, and by the way, if you, if you start concerning yourself with that kind of sophisticated sleight of hand, 
you need you need to know how to catch a jo uh, an in jog, an out jog, and a side jog with every with with the uh, with all kinds of shuffling techniques with, uh, with one handed cuts. With you need that that's that that's the requirements, right? You could find a tutorial series, the basics of card control, where I cover all of this. And if you don't know this, so if you don't know how to catch an uh, in jog with a um, uh, overhand shuffle, or to how to, how to catch an in jog with an um, Uh, fan, uh, the, you need to go there first. Seriously. Anyway, it's a different topic. It's all there on my channel page. So we are in this position, and I don't know how they did play it, but it's basically um, I need to get to regrip. I'm in this position. I, I, I put my hand. I come here with my hand, and then I I pull both packages out like this. I come in, into a position like this. And then I bring this up again, something like that. I don't know how exactly. I never did this with the camera, but it is done in a situation where you um, catch right. You catch the break from the from the table, so you have a spectator cut the cards. You take the break with you. Ah, that that's the motion, right? Then you transfer the break like like this while you talk. You transfer the break like this while you talk. You br and in in this motion you just uh, perform this shift, which is once again a super great example that this is all just about shifting two packages, and this is something s someone came up with because he was a table worker and he needed to do this pass. And if you're in an interaction with people and you have cards going, to get into this position is super uncomfortable, right? To get in this position and then do something like this is sneaky from the half, but, but being in this position to say so to somebody to cut the cards, to take the cut. And now I can't do this in full speed because I've never done this. And then just go like this, talk with the people, go, go like this, talk with the people. And in the, tra in this transfer, now I went out in the, in like in this transfer, in this motion to transfer the cards is super clever. And I believe you can uh, do this in an action that you have this really no I got to go like this it's the, this downside so you go into this position i had it for a second like where where how did i do this i have the path come here i come here let me see this i come here and i pull this one out a little bit right and then i go into this triangle shape with the index so i now i'm in this position right something like this and then i how do i can how do i do this now to get this i i haven't read this i would think about this now i need to get in this position Probably by coming back, something like this, you know, closing it. Anyway, I have to go into this once again myself, but it's just for you to get the idea, right? This this, this is uh, sophisticated card magic. That means this is designed for a specific purpose. And the question is, do you need it? And if you need it, sit your ass down and figure out how you embed it into what you need. And um, if you don't need it, You, it's good to know that it's there. Move on with something else that you need. And now, finally, to close this off here, let's talk. All right, funny, funny. The Shali E pass is also really funny here, where we have here now this little discussion whether you can do this invisible or not. So we one-handed, so you have to do um, you do a Sh Shali E shift on the base of a um, of a break, and you do this with the tilting t motion of the wrist. And some say it can't be done invisible, but. Uh, Charles Bertram, the famous Bertram, uh, worked this sucker so hard that he could use it as a uh, color change and um, his dexterity was so insane that he could do the slide 80 times in a freaking minute. So, uh, sometimes magic, sometimes playing cards turns men into infants. 
<laughs> but that's all right, you know, because that's uh, that's why we all love doing this. It's a playful thing, playing cards. That's why they're called playing cards, right? And um, but here again is this thing: uh, if you want something so bad, you can max out everything, right? It's just like uh, what, what, it's a question of what you want to level, right? And you can probably uh, turn this into a color change. And maybe one day I decide because I need to do this crazy color change and I want to learn it. And then I go there and I m m spend hours of hours of practice. But for now, I'm super um, happy with the color changes I know. And I don't need more for, for what I do. And there's so much more I, I actually want to uh, uh, want to learn and master. Um, I, I don't even have enough time left probably, right? So I, I, I skip on, the, on this one, uh, definitely. There was another move uh, which um, which I found very intriguing. It's a pop-up card production. I believe it's an Aaron Fisher uh, uh, thing. Um, so you have the card pop out uh, out of a fan. I I was a bloody beginner when I first was confronted with it, and I decided to just skip it. <laughs> I don't know, but it looks sick. If you have the fan and a card, the card comes jumping out. If you know it, um, lucky you. Um, Anyway, now let's talk about the invisible turnover pass. And once again here, I don't want, um, I'm not going here in depth. This is just, you know, scratching the, 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 um, the surface on the basic handling and then going into um, an analysis here. So what Bre and um, who God suggests here is, so first of all, let me do this with a, um, here, Omni block. So we're in this position, right? And what we do is we um, tilt the lower portion into the palm of our hand. Then we have this portion drop down and this is what Broe and um, who God say here. It's this motion to go from, no, 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 wait, wait, to go from here bring it down here and then in this motion to rotate it. And now this is a lot of hand motion, right? A finger motion. So you, you pull with the index and you kind of, you know, extend your um, second finger all just to turn the deck around. Now this is what you will still do, but you will get a super light touch here between thumb and second finger so that this happens, right? So you don't even need the index finger anymore. I, I, isn't that cool? So, so no. So from here, it's this, this motion. So you basically just do, let it, let it fall down and then the other package picks it up here and then you bring it all together upwards. And performance speed looks like this. Isn't that sick? Isn't that great? Now, to the lower portion. We have the index finger who pushes the card forward, right? And we clip it here, like in this manner. Also this, we want to reduce as the max. So we just want to tip it a little bit. And we, we have it drop against the ball of our hand. And you can also use gravity here, look. Just like that. That's the motion. Very soft. Now you combine this with the other one and the thing becomes effortless. Nah. And it's the same thing like with the pass. You don't want to have your hands and you don't want to care about, you know, flashing or not flashing. You first of all, your first practice goal is to get this um, smooth with ease. Right there, here you go. And then this is so beautiful and I really rec recommend everybody mastering this because you don't even need to worry about a justification when you do it from the top because why not just do it um, as a beginner intermediate here from here because you can just go like look I've got a fairly mixed deck of cards please select the card right spectator selects the card now you catch your break and you don't need to stick your, stick your pinky in there you just catch your break and in the motion you turn you turn the card over you've done this you've done it already isn't that beautiful once again, for the workings, as a beginner, there is my tutorial series up and running on my channel, 
So if you're a bloody beginner, check the info cards as well as the info box. So once again, we spread the cards. We, um, no, 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 we have this here, we have it here. We spread the cards, we have a spectator select the card, we pick, we catch a break above the card, and then we just turn the deck around. Just like that, bang, brings the card to the top. Isn't that, that's super clean, that's super, it works. And it's, it, it, it even doesn't flash. And uh, uh, the great thing about it, you don't have to do it so super fast like I did, because of course I practiced this. There's a lot of time as a beginner, you know, you take some time to catch a card here so you can be in this position, basically for the rest of your life and then you just bring it here and turn it around very slowly super no no time for no, no need for speed uh, no need for haste and it enables you to perform a sophisticated slide right there uh, pretty much at the beginning of your career as a card shop now for the table and we talked about the difficulty in the table. You can use this as a top top version. So we have a card here. We have the Ace of Spades. I catch a break above the Ace of uh, uh, of Diamonds. It was sorry. Now really important here. If you once got a break, don't rush. Don't hurry. You've got a break. You can transfer the break. You you should know this by heart. Once again, this is a requisite. If you don't know this stuff, and if you're not, you know gained a little uh, performance experience with this basic stuff, catching a break and using the, for example, simple triple table card or something to control the card. You are outrunning yourself, you know? It's, it's okay, you can stay here, suck it all in, but this is what you gotta do first, otherwise um, you will not really um, enjoy yourself because you're gonna be stressed out when, uh, when the heat comes and stuff. Ace of spades, catching the ace of spades, and then it's an emotion of, you know, um, of... Um, Squaring the cards on the table and throwing them on the table. And of course, this is something you would play in a manner that, um, let's see if I manage to um, get the um, eight. No, it was the seven of diamonds, you know, seven of diamonds on the table. Let's do some magic. And the seven of diamonds changed into the ace of spades. But this is, of course, ha, just an illusion. Mexican turnover fuck up. I hate when I do this. Here we go. So, let me show this again. You bring your target card, Ace of Spades, you lose it in the deck. It's lost in the deck, and um, I lost it now, really, but let's see. And then you just um, square up the cards. And if you don't control it to the top, then you might control it to the bottom and use it like this. Look, we got the, uh, what happened here now? So I lost it here, and then I bring it to the top, like that. Something like this. So, one more time. I want you to understand that if you do something like this, all of this is not happening when people are flashing your hands, right? And if you are planning to shoot um, with a camera, you gotta work your ass off to get those things not flashing or you use a different method. Once again, anyways, we are in a situation now where I would be in an interact uh, with the people, I would even um, switch the card. So I'm holding my break, but the deck is completely innocent. The card is lost and I would just, you know, square them out at the table, place them on top of the deck and hopefully get my ace to the top, right? And now I've been doing, I've been showing off a little bit, which is a bad habit. So I have to read this first one to myself once again. At this late date, it should not be necessary to emphasize the fact that slides should never be used except a secret process in the course of a trick. To demonstrate one's ability in making the pass or changing a card, for instance, is simply to destroy the mystery of such tricks in which the slides are used later on. Boo boo. Very bad habit. <coughs> so. So for the invisible turnover pass, we cut this motion right this motion we lose this motion up and we we, we turn it into into this motion into oh sorry into just the motion where you have to package slide down a little bit it's not going to behave like an omni back because this is a whole block so it slides down and as soon as it's down you bring it up and once again there is no need for speed here. This would be done very casually. And then it looks super 
a crisp. And by looking good, I mean it doesn't look like nothing. It just it looks like you just um, turned the, car, the the whole deck over in a very innocent moment from the mindset of a spectator. The card is lost in the deck. They don't care anymore. They, they really don't give a fuck. And you just turn the card, the deck over. And if you now immediately show this, they will be blown away, of course, because they have no freaking clue what you did. But, you know, you waste material. You waste ammunition because, the, because what's happened now? You just, you know, did something and now the card has changed. So they, they will pin back you. They will say, yeah, oh, well, you, you must be very clever with the sense because in that very brief time he changed the card. And you don't want that. What you want is to create an atmosphere and uh, a, a role play with your audience and you want to you know get ahead of them and you want to use these things when you show the effects the people will be not able to trace anything back they will be completely uh, misdirected you know because misdirection is not just pointing uh, in another direction and then do something dirty misdirection is you know just you know um, tilting their perspective a little bit to the side and then they keep walking into this direction right and um, that the the angle of of you doing nasty bad things manipulative stuff gets wider and wider it's just like world politics you know it's just like a banking system you know it's just you know getting it all under control and then you have people who think they know what's going on who have a mindset who have a story who have a belief system and it's all set up for you to create the illusion which by the way is a powerful position you will might experience this if you pr proceed performing for people and you will get over this mechanics you know Everybody who's excited about the pass is a bloody fucking beginner. Everybody who's like, oh, the pass is all, oh, oh, is a beginner. Because it's just a, it's just a tool, right? It's like, imagine a, um, uh, a craftsman going like, oh, the hammer, I've got a freaking hammer. You know, you wouldn't go to the guy and say like, dude, build my house, you know? <laughs> no, I don't, want, I don't want somebody who's excited about a hammer, hammer building my house, right? Or a surgeon, you know? Whoa, I got a knife here. It's a scapel. Wow, it's super sharp, you know? It's like, it's not the guy I, I want me to cut cut me open, you know? <laughs> if, you, if, you get, if you get what I'm, what I'm saying, right? So, have I said, is it all? Are we good? Where are we? Let me see. Let, let me see if this is uh, what, I, what, I, what I was hoping for. Mm, 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 mm. The pass. Just this one thing that I that I um uh, uh, underlined here. The transposition of the pack is made under cover of a smooth and orderly action, which ex exactly simulates the turning of the pack. Now we're talking about the turnover pass here. And in studying the actions, the reader should, so you should, and I should, strive for smoothness with one movement following the other without any hesitation or awkwardness until the slide to all intents and purpose does become the simple action of turning the pack face upwards. And this is maybe the, the single most important thing that I want to, um, to share with you guys. You want to make the things you uh, uh, you do with your hands smooth and casual and you want to make them meaningful you don't want to uh, rest in a position just because that's what you need not to flash this position why you wouldn't do this it's awkward everything awkward gives it away so it's not about not flashing it's about not being awkward it's not about being super fast it's about to be super smooth the lightest touch possible and speed is a side product of smoothness, right? But it's better to do it smooth and slow, but fast and tense. So the forget about speed, do it smooth and then embed the things where they're useful, really useful and relax about it. And then we're good. And then 
all the effort you will need to put in there will pay off, right? And otherwise you're just wasting time. And guys, I just wanna 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 say that I'm proud. I'm proud of you guys. I've got all here, we got here. I'm gonna show you guys. Herr Logi, practicing the pass. We got um, uh, Colin G, practicing the pass. We got Van Witt, practicing the pass. And you are there where everybody has been whoever whoever practices the pass. It is like, it is like, oh, okay, okay, mm, okay, okay. Just know the camera angle you're using, but I, I guess you know, uh, I just wanted to just mention this one more time. It's just for, you know, looking at it. It's not to make it invisible in this way. This is just for you to look at it if, if there is the index finger and, and stuff, right? Because I've seen you shooting from these weird angles and you're looking so so sad while you do it. Don't be sad. It takes time. It's difficult, right? And it will come to you if you give it the time necessary. So now let's read some comments here before I close this. And um, you know, this is not this is not the last time. Probably um, I will... Um, <laughs> I will regret that I haven't said this thing or the other thing, but you know, this this channel is running. There's a lot of stuff coming. It's not gonna be the last time we talked about the pass. Um, it's it's if you use it well um, and proper, a, a very very cool move. Yeah, and um, and it's a blast. It's just a blast practicing it. So. So we had a binary second. Um, uh, I think most tricks can be figured out if you have time and uh, 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 recording to watch a trick again and again and again. Detracts from the magic a little if you just want to know how it's done. R exactly. Um, and this is also how many magicians study and um, how you can save a lot of money, right? And put your money in the right place. Because for example, um, I buy stuff, um, you know, sometimes I just get the, the, the itchy, you know, uh, and then I buy a flap card or I buy a product where I just, you know, I know it's too good to be true, right? And then you get something that is, you know, specific, let's say. But putting your money in something like this, and I don't have any advertisement deals or something it's like this is a card on a glass dog. Isn't, it's a 45 minute routine featuring classic effects, classic tricks, put very well together. The guy worked uh, all his life on this, performed this hundred thousands of times. He's really talking from experience. And this is so rich. Leonard Green, the whole workings of Leonard Green, stuff like this, you know, this is where you watch, you learn, and you have those people with real experience of performing this explaining why, why they're the reasoning behind the choices they made. This is big time learning. Everything else is just, you know, stalking tricks, you know. I have enough tricks. I have in, and I have those tricks. You know, I said they are so great. They are so great. And then, oh, you have to. Nah, I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use this. And then at one point, I, I saved the money, you know, and I put it. Uh, I put it to to right place. Um, same with playing cards, you know. Buy them in bricks, you know, the ones I love, and um, stay away from fancy cards for the most of it because not. I'm not a rich guy, you know. I'm not a rich guy, you know. I've got to work hard and a lot uh, to to make a decent living. So by the way. All you odd maniacs supporting me via Pat, we are on Patreon. Thank you so much because you make it happen. You're rocking awesome, guys. It's really amazing. Um, uh, so, so, so. Uh, the, any tips for someone who might have smaller hands, not having trouble hiding, but having trouble hanging on each packet? Either the top or bottom card tends to get stuck and remains at the top. Top. Um, if you're still around, Devin, um, it is just what I um, said. Don't try to um, keep your hands so close together because you want to hide something. You see, you have a lot of space here to open it up and to, you know, um, let me do this with the Omni deck here again, to loosen it, to, to loosen it up and just, you know, um, from exposed we here, you know, to loosen it up and just to make it drop. You know, you can just you know, give it some space for the for the for, for, for uh, you can you can get tighter later on if you want to but you know you, you your hands need to build the muscles they need to understand it, it needs to be translated in your in your brain you know you have never done this before you need to build the synopsis in your brain you the structure to do this so give it some some time and um, for everybody who thinks hands are too small 
they, they are only exception. If only if you're a, a, a very young child, like 10, 12 years, so you might have the small hands for a classic poker deck. Um, there are these bridge decks you could um, uh, use. And if you are really a, um, a small person, um, the bridge decks are. But if you not have extremely small hands, um, you, you can make it uh, happen. Um, you can make it happen. I've seen people with like really tiny, chubby, fatty fingers pulling off the slickest, sickest slide of fan bullshit um i've seen i'm uh not trying to boast that i noticed it i just goes back to our first point that pass in the trick itself it's one of the downbeats okay i don't, I don't go into the discussions here okay that dallas taylor says that he was afraid about the pass and um that it helped him understanding to do this in offbeat and to re relax about it and this is really 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 true um and this is a mistake that um beginners uh, do very often so you are thinking as a beginner i have to do difficult uh, things in order to be a great magician and you have no uh, uh, performance experience so you start performing and it's super stressy it is super stressful you know you know people are all you you're all over the place you you lose track of time it's like getting it's like smoking some really strong weed when you start performing magic it's like what the fuck <laughs> it all blows in your face and then you come you try to remember your routine you paranoid you stress you feel guilty that you're just fucking all the people over and then you come to this very difficult slide that you can't even really perform well yet and you're and you, it's like running against the wall basically you're just sprinting full pace like panicking and smashing into a stone brick wall that's that's how it feels like <laughs> i've been there you know and i say that you don't do this to yourself this don't do this to yourself this is bullshit this is really bullshit right take it easy take a step down I have this tutorial series, the basics on card control. You can do this without pulling out of such a um, difficult move under pressure right about when everything goes there, right? You can't break it up and, you know, get yourself a little time, you know, and gain the experience. And by the time you get there, because you need to practice the slide anyway for quite a while to get it smooth, um, you will have to the, the performance experience and then you will be... I, you can be like I tried to do this. I just did it in every video. So this is the table perspective. This is the face perspective. Okay. Do you see this? What's happening in between there? Right. There is this gap, this break. When people look down and they look up, they see for for milli nanoseconds, they see bullshit, nothing, nada. They're blind. They're really blind. And the funny thing is that um, the the brain. Um, uh, <laughs> connects this picture when it goes back up or something else comes and you go back down again it just pretends as if nothing happened in between right so when i'm coming from here to here and i just occupy also the, with my beautiful face and the bullshit i'm sp i'm permanently spitting you know i just you know um uh, uh occupy the people and then i would do something like this and now, now i'm pretending I'm, I'm when the people by the time the people go down i have put something underneath one card yeah i should have done this with the block here but i'm i'm, I'm stupid right but the people think it's the deck and that's how you do this and you will go crazy you can't believe how freaking much time you got between this one people are looking down and then people are looking up there is so much time it's a snap of a finger that's all you need to get started with it right and to get to to, to learn about not stressing out with this window of opportunity you need a little performance experience by simply catching a break and using a, a double undercut or um, uh, any other cut, you know, to get it to the top. So, guys, now you went um, uh, happy about meeting yourselves in the chat. That's great. So, and I can't, um, I can't catch up with all the, with all everything you talked about um, here in the chat. But that's it for me for now. We have one minute. A uh, one hour, 14 minutes and six seconds counting. Guys, it's time to say goodbye. 
So uh, now uh, it's time to hit the keys and say good nighty night. I had a blast of a time. This was a super productive session, at least from my reference point. I've been basically with a little stupid masquerade at the beginning of the live stream. Um, with the cards here, I've been, you know, stressed out, you know, not to get it all on the table for you guys because I love you and because I want you to become the freaking best magicians you can be. I want you guys to go out there and entertain your audience, amuse your audience and to stun your audience with crazy illusions. And I want you to be super relaxed about it, right? Because otherwise it's, uh, you know, I know so stage fright is a terrible thing. And this is another topic and I'm not done with it yet. I, I, I have my flashbacks, I must admit, but um, we're getting there. So if you're a beginner, you will find all the material you need in the info cards, in the info box, in the info box, there's also a link to our Discord channel where super nice people help each other out. Find a link in on my Patreon where crazy people support what I'm doing here. And if we um, hit the next milestone, it's just a couple of, of bucks away. We're going to do a super exclusive live stream like this, but with video for those um, um, odd maniacs and um, Maybe we stream it. I, I upload this later on YouTube. I don't know, but this, the, the, the live stream itself will be own exclusive for uh, them at maniacs. Um, and then this is then this is the step because the channel is growing right now. We got a wave by to say something positive here, like the 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 um, the, uh, the, the the analytics they uh, they they pointing into the direction of growth. So um, as more and more people shuffle in. This had, would have been a step anyways, you know, to um, to create kind of a barrier to keep the community cozy. For now, however, we are we had a peak of 25 folks right now. The common, uh, the usual um, uh, suspects in the chat. I had a blast of the time. So let's see what you guys are writing here. Um, yes, that card control series is, is killer. Awesome. Wit von Wit is already working with it. Colin Robson said, thank you. This was indeed very productive. Awesome. I'm, I'm happy that it was productive for you. Very rich. Excited to rewatch. Awesome. Thanks indeed. Says hello. Devin Ryan says, thanks. Came late, but still got something out of it. Awesome. Well, you know, as soon as I'm done here, I, it takes, I don't know, some time to process and then you can rewatch it from the beginning. That's the great thing about, that's why I'm streaming on YouTube because it, it's all get, uh, uh, saved in my library <clears throat> and by the way i'm also um uh transferred uh, all my stuff to library this is an open source decentralized alternative to youtube you know because who knows how long we're still here this bullshit is still going on in the in the uh, uh, in the background i'm just ignoring it you know uh <laughs> the the end of the world you know <laughs> what the fuck but it's uh, it, it doesn't matter Great, uh, Thatcher. Uh, see on M strides. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm reaching you. Um, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for doing this. Cheers, everyone. All right. I think we, we're through with everybody. So let's, uh, turn here the music on, uh, for the last, uh, uh, time. Um, let's go for this nice outro song here. Um, this one here is nice, probably. I don't know. Thank you so much. You know the drill. My name is Odd Marius, and this is just what I do. You get a day of cards out, you practice and you practice well, and it will come to you. And in the meantime, rest assured, more magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Ciao. Odd Marius magic. I can subscribe.